Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we would look at elimination of unrealized gain or loss on depreciable assets. Specifically, we're going to be using the cost method. Now, I did two prior sessions. One, I explained how we dealt with non-depreciable and session two what dealt with depreciable asset. But this section, I'm going to use the cost method just to kind of so you know how the cost method work. Uh, this is an advanced accounting course. This, this topic is also covered on the CPA exam. Now, if, before we start, some housekeeping uh, items. Um, I always like to connect with my viewers, subscribers. Uh, please connect with me. You could connect with me on LinkedIn. I'm very active on LinkedIn. And uh, I do post my lectures there as well as other related topics about the CPA exam, uh, accounting, your accounting career, so on and so forth. If you're a Facebook user, please like my Facebook page, Accounting Lectures. Obviously, you want to subscribe to my YouTube channel so you'll always get up to date. And this is where I house all my lectures and I do have a Twitter account. So in this session, what I'm going to do, I'm going to use, I'm going to work a complete consolidation example using the cost method. And this way, we're going to have subsequent year to the intercompany sale. And it's going to be an upstream sale. Now, uh, what, I'm, what I want you to do is, Copy all the information down in case if you if you don't have the slides. I'm going to be flipping between the slides and the Excel sheet. I would like to show you the full picture of how we're going to go through this process. So we have P Company owns 80% of S Company. The stock was purchased for 960000 on January 1st, 2019. This is when we made the purchase in this company. When Shannon Company's retained earning was 675000 So this is the beginning retained earning when we purchased the company on january 1st 2011 shannon company sold s sold a uh, fixed asset to p company for nine hundred and sixty thousand. so we sold them an asset for nine hundred and sixty thousand. s company has has purchased these assets for one million three hundred and fifty on january 1st 2001 so their cost is one million three hundred and fifty at which time their estimated useful life was 25 year Okay, so they had 25 years to go. The estimated remaining useful life to Pitt's company on 1111 is 10 years. So what's left is 10 years. Both companies employ the straight line method. Prepare a consolidated statement work paper for the year ended December 31st. So what we're going to do, we're going to do a complete consolidation. And uh, let's start with the first entry. So what do we do with the first entry? Now, actually, before we start the first entry, let me show you the balance sheet and the income statement for s and p company so this is the uh, this is p company this is their income statement revenues minus expenses this is s company revenue minus expenses this is the beginning retained earnings of uh, uh, p company this is the one one for s company this is income from above obviously this is income from above this is the uh, dividend declared by P company. This is the dividend declared by S company. And this is their current assets, the investment, which has not been adjusted yet, um, planned property and equipment, depreciation, um, capital stock, you know, Shannon company, as well as uh, Pitts company. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is to basically reestablish uh, the the investment account basically bring the investment account as well as the retained earnings account to establish reciprocity bring them up to date now let's take a look at what we are giving in this problem we are told that retained earnings was when we bought the company retained earnings was six hundred and seventy five thousand this is when we bought the company how much is retained earning now the retained earnings now is one million uh, and 38,000 this number right here okay what does that mean well let, let's do a quick computation to see what happened from that date to that date okay when we bought this company well it's too big when we bought the company retained earning was 675 therefore from the date that we purchased the company till today the difference between the beginning retained earning and when we bought the company 336,000 so simply put the retained earning of Shannon, Shannon, Shannon retained earning increased by 363. What's going to happen? Those earnings will increase our investment account by only 80%. Why 80%? Because we, we uh, 
own 80% of the company. So the increase times times 0.8, that's going to give us $290,400. Simply put, we are going to make an adjustment. And that adjustment, it's going to bring the investment account up. We're going to debit the investment account, 290400 We're going to debit. This is the investment account. We're going to increase the investment account. Notice we increase the investment account by 290000 That's the debit. And we are going to credit the retained earnings of P because basically what happened, those earnings becomes our earning. So this is the first entry, 200 $90,400. So this is the first entry. Let me show it to you on the uh, PowerPoint slides. Okay, so this is the first entry to establish re reciprocity, convert to equity. Basically, we need to bring all the earnings. So what happened is the difference between those two is the earnings that S Company uh, generated since they were purchased, which is 363, we got 80% of it. This 80% will increase our investments and will increase our retained earning to bring the investment account, which we're going to be eventually eliminating this account, but we need to bring it up to date before we eliminate. Okay. So the next thing we're going to look at is what happened uh, in the transaction uh, of the uh, intercompany transaction. If you remember from the data giving, S company sold P company a piece of equipment. Okay, the original cost of S was one million three hundred and fifty. Uh, the accumulated depreciation was five hundred and forty. Cost minus accumulated depreciation gives us the book value. And basically, what they did, they sold it to the parent company for nine hundred and sixty. Okay, so the parent company will debit equipment nine hundred and sixty thousand. They will credit cash nine hundred and. 60,000. And this is 1 1 2011. This is when the transaction took place. So it's good to go back and see what happened. On the sub, what they do, they debit cash 960. They will debit accumulated depreciation 540. They will credit the equipment at 1,350,000 and they will credit again, they will credit again, and I'm doing this on purpose, they will credit again, uh, the difference between the two is uh, uh, 810, I'm sorry, 810 minus 960 is what, 100 and, let's see, what is it, I just, so the book value was 8, the book value was 810 and they sold it for 960 therefore the gain was 150,000 the gain is 150,000 let me just remind you what we need to do we need to always report the asset at 1,960 we need to remove this gain every year and we need to restore the accumulated depreciation okay so remember those three accounts will need to be adjusted all right now by the end of the year what happened is this so by the end of that year by the end of 2011 uh, it's okay I'm, I'm going through this slowly but that's okay by the end of 2011 what happened is this what happened is this the company will debit the gain they will debit the gain this is one at uh, 1231 2011 they will debit the gain. They will debit this gain, 150000 to take out this gain. They will uh, debit equipment for 390 to make sure the equipment is back. The equipment is back to the original value, to the original cost for the consolidation. And they will credit accumulated depreciation, 540000 This is all happening 12-31-2011. Now also remember what what else happened. So basically, I I uh, eliminated the intercompany gain. I put the asset back on the books. I put the depreciation back on the books for the consolidated entity at the original cost. And what else would they do that year as well? What else would they do that year? They would also now remember the depreciation for 
S company was 81,000. The depreciation for P company is 96. So there's a difference of depreciation of 15,000. Well, what's going to happen is we are going to realize some of that depreciation through usage. Therefore, what we do too, 12, 31, 2011, we are going to debit accumulated depreciation, 15,000 credit depreciation expense, 15,000. And all these entries that I'm, I am I am preparing now belongs to 12 31 2011 and those are the entries that we work in the prior session so in case you're wondering why I am not cover covering them in detail so that's why so this is what happened 2011 but the question asks for 2012 so what do we need to do in 2012 well the first thing we need to do we need to basically repeat this entry this entry will need to be repeated we need to put eliminate the gain from retained earnings Put the equipment back on the books at put million three hundred and fifty and restore accumulated depreciation then do something with with depreciation which we'll do in a moment so let's do it step by step all right first thing we debit property plant and equipment three hundred and ninety thousand we debit retained earning and we debit non-controlling interest we don't debit gain anymore the gain is gone remember and just a minute ago i told you i debited gain 150 the gain is gone but this is the gain now this is the 150 it's part of retained earnings so we debit retained earnings we remove from retained earnings 120 and we re remove from the non-controlling interest because remember we we only have 80 percent of the gain and we remove from non-controlling we move from non-controlling interest 30,000. then we establish the original the accumulated depreciation of 540,000. so this is basically the same entry that we did the prior year except that it's for this year okay for 2012 and this entry will keep repeating itself until the asset is sold all right now what else what else do we have uh, what else do we have to do what else do we have uh, to do then for that same year you remember the prior year we booked depreciate we adjusted depreciation of 15,000 we have to do the same thing we're gonna debit accumulated depreciation 15,000 credit depreciation expense 15,000 so this is what we need to do for this 15,000 are we done yet we're not done yet we also have to account for the prior year accumulated depreciation that was in the in the work papers of the prior year which is not reflected in the books therefore we need to debit accumulated depreciation 15,000 because it was for the full year then credit retained earnings for the parent company 12,000 credit NCI 3,000 now you're asking can I can I do a compound entry here and the answer is yes I'm gonna combine those two entries I just wanted to show you that basically it's two entries one for the current year and one to recapture the the prior gain that was that was not showing in the uh, on the on the books of each of each uh, of each party so let me go back go in there and show you the consolidated entry now what I should do I should go back to the Excel sheet and update update everything so let me just uh, let me do this and discard let me go to the Excel sheet so this is the entry let me show you the entry in case uh, slideshow so this is the this is the entry so part of this 15,000 is for the current year and part of it for the prior year for the accumulated depreciation this is the current year and those the 15,000 from the prior year let's go go to the excel sheet because I told you I'm gonna keep doing this on the excel sheet on the excel sheet here's what's gonna happen I'm gonna have to debit as I told you property plant and equipment earlier we I need to debit property plant and equipment 300 and 90,000 thus increasing property plant and equipment by 390,000 I need to debit retained earnings I need to debit retained earnings by 120,000 for P company therefore I need to debit retained earnings for P company now where did I come up with that 120,000 it's 150 of the gain total gain and we only gonna get 80% out of it which is 120,000 I need to debit the non-controlling interest 30,000 need to debit non-controlling interest 30,000 and where's that 30,000 coming from it's 150,000 
and part of that gain went to the non-controlling interest of 20%. That's 30,000. And I also need to reestablish my my accumulated depreciation. Where's my balance sheet? Accumulated depreciation. I need to establish this account for uh, 540,000. And what I just did, in case you're wondering, I just uh, I just updated book and en this entry. Now I'm going to update this entry. I'm going to debit accumulated depreciation 30,000. I'm going to debit accumulated depreciation 30,000. I am going to credit other expenses 15. The other expenses is for depreciation, but they don't have depreciation here. Therefore, I'm going to credit expenses 15,000. I am going to credit retained earnings 12 and non-controlling interest three. I'm going to credit retained earnings 12. And again, this is the part of the 15,000. 80% goes to the parent company. And non-controlling interest is 3,000. 3,000. Okay. Let's keep going. Let's keep going with the consolidation. I know you have to work very slowly here. I want you to understand everything. Okay. Now, what else do I have to do? I have to eliminate intercompany dividend. Let's look at the sheet. Maybe it's easier to eliminate intercompany dividend. I have total dividend of 60 of 60,000. What do I need to do? I need to eliminate this. Therefore, I am going to debit this account. I'm going to debit this account $60,000. Notice the, the dividend is removed, the, the dividend is removed, and I'm going to have to credit this account here. What is the uh, dividend 60,000, dividend declared, this is the dividend declared, this is Shannon Company, credit dividend declared 60,000. So basically the journal entry would look something like this, debit dividend income, credit dividend declared, I just did this. Now at the end, I have to eliminate, let me just show you the entry, then I will show it to you on the books, on the uh, on the Excel sheet. And the last thing you do, last thing we have to do for this exercise is eliminate the investment account and create the NCI. We have to debit the retained earning for S company because the retained earning of S company does not appear on the consolidation, which will be 1,038,000. We have to debit the common stock of S company, all the common, all the equity of of S company will have to be gone. We have to also we have to also remove them against the investment account. We credit the investment account and we establish NCI three twelve six hundred. Let's do that. Let's do the let's do these entries. Okay. So I'm gonna have to debit first. Start with retained earnings. I'm gonna have to debit the retained earnings and the retained earnings is right here for Shannon Company one one million and eighty three thousand. I'm gonna have to debit this account one million and 38,000 okay this account retained I eliminated, I eliminated the retained earnings I also have to eliminate the company common stock they have 525 I have to debit this account 525 that's gone okay now I have to I debit those and have to credit the investment account let me credit the investment account the investment account is, is 1,200,000 one million two hundred one million two hundred fifty thousand four hundred dollars I have to credit this account one million two hundred one million two hundred fifty thousand and four hundred dollars the investment account is gone what's left is I have to establish is I have to establish the NCI the non controlling account the non controlling account now the non controlling account I mean you have to do the uh, you have to compute the non-controlling account. So how do we compute the non-controlling account? Well, the non-controlling account is the 20%. So remember, the beginning retained earnings for this company when we started, when we purchased this company, the beginning retained earnings was uh, 675,000. That was given in the problem when we bought the company, it was 675. And the ending retained earning was 1,038,000 1, as of the beginning of the year. One, one, of this year retained earning was one million one million and thirty eight thousand so overall the 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 retained earnings of the company 
increased by 363. What is our share? What's the share of the uh, of the uh, non-controlling interest? Their share is 20%. Their share is 20%. That's 72,600. Take 300,000, which is income of this year, times 0.8. That's 240,000. Those two is the 312,600. 300, 312,600. Therefore, we credit this non-controlling interest, 312,600. And this is where the 312,600 um, 312, coming, coming from, okay? Now, let's see, um, let's see, let's see what we have here. So, non, we still have to uh, remove the non-controlling interest here. Remember, we have to, re we have to remove the non-controlling interest from the consolidated Work paper. Now, how how much do we remove from the non-controlling interest? Remember, we're gonna start with three hundred thousand, three hundred thousand, plus the fifteen thousand of depreciation that we did in in entry th entry three times twenty percent. Because we're good, okay, and that's negative sixty three, negative sixty three thousand, negative sixty three. Thousand. So here's the consolidated income now. The consolidated income six hundred and twenty-seven thousand, um, and the ending NCI is three hundred thirty-three thousand six hundred dollars, which is the retained earnings from above from NCI. They have income of sixty-three thousand for NCI minus the dividend for NCI. That's equal to forty-eight. Forty-eight. Then what we do is we when we establish the prior NCI, which is two eighty-five six hundred. So the earning plus 285,600, which is 30,000, um, which is minus 30,000 plus 30 plus 12,600 equal to 285. The ending retained earning is 336, the ending NCI is 336,600. Total asset, let's make sure that it equals total asset 3,884,100. Um, Liabilities and equities is the same thing, which is, it means we did it, we did it, we compute this properly. Okay, so this is how we computed this. Now you might be asked to, to, uh, to, to, to come up with ending retained earnings, ending, ending retained earnings, which is the retained earnings of the consolidated retained earnings. You might have to prove this. So this is the consolidated retained earnings, one million eight hundred seventy-four thousand four hundred. Now how do we? How can we just make sure we understand the ending retained earnings? Now. When we started, the retained earnings was, for the parent company, 1,500,000. Let me just, 1,500,000. This is the retained earnings P company. Then what's going to happen to retained earning? It's going to increase by the amount of earnings that we generated over, over the years. Okay? And how much did we generate it? over the years. Well, now the ending retained earnings for S company is 1,263. This is retained earnings for P company, the end of the year. And when we bought this company, retained earnings was 675,000. So let's find the difference between those. 1,263 minus 675 is 588. Okay, so this is the earnings that we got from S company over over the years, up to date. Then we have to be careful. We have to deduct. We have to deduct any unrealized profit on sale of equipment. What does that mean? Remember, when we sold the equipment, let me go back here, and I'm flipping back and forth because there's no way around this. When we sold the equipment, we had a gain of 150. We had a gain of 150. Remember, we have to deduct that gain. Okay, because it's an intercompany gain. So when we bought the when we when we start when in two thousand and one, let me go back here, we had a gain of one fifty. Then remember, by the end of the first year, we recognized fifteen thousand of that gain in form of depreciation. This is year one depreciation, which is two thousand and eleven. Then this year we recognize another fifteen thousand for year two depreciation. So now we would have subtract Rather than subtracting 150, we're only going to subtract 120. And what is that? And that's the unrealized profit on sale of equipment. Okay? Minus 
120. So 588 minus 120 is 468. Now remember, we're only going to get 80% of that because the parent company owns 80%, so 468. And the non-controlling interest get the rest times 0 0.8. That's going to give us 374. 374, 400, 374, 400. And if we do, if we add 374, 400, that's going to give us 1,874,400. Yes, it did match. So basically, I, basically I did a confirmation. Okay, so hopefully you would um, you understand how we did this compu computation, how we confirmed the retained earnings. If you have any questions, any comments, by all means email me. If you're studying for your CPA exam, as always, study hard. If you need additional lectures, go to my website. And if you happen to go to my website, please consider contributing or donating money. Study hard for the exam. It's worth it.